From the shores of North Africa, the United Nations High Command launches the greatest amphibious military operation in history, the invasion of Sicily. From many ports, the mighty naval armada gets underway. Ships flying the flags of Britain and the United States, ships of the Netherlands, the Polish, the Greek, the Indian navies taking part in the concerted assault aimed at the Italian's island stronghold. Beneath the guns of cruisers, battleships, gunboats, destroyers, the convoys steam across the Mediterranean. From Admiral Hewitt, commanding American ships in the seaborne invasion, Lieutenant General Patton receives a new battle flag. Now proceeding exactly according to plans perfected months in advance, a fleet of more than 3,000 ships nears the Sicilian coast. At dawn, transports stand offshore, troops ready to disembark. Landing barges speed back and forth from ships to beach. Men of General Montgomery's great 8th Army seize the east coast. General Patton's veterans of Tunisia make for the southwest. Units of Canadians, Australians and French are taking part in the attack. Naval guns cover the landing. of supplies and equipment are ferried ashore. At many points, troops waded in, surprised to find much less resistance than expected. Giant invasion boats brought 4,600 miles from America under their own power, unload huge amphibious tanks capable of rolling right up on the enemy's beach. The first important objective of the American forces is the occupation of Jela. Within seven hours, U.S. Rangers fought their way into the town. General Patton, veteran of the Tunisian campaign, goes ashore to take command. Native Sicilians, told of the invasion through leaflets dropped by Allied airmen, gaze in wonder at the tremendous vehicles and weapons being brought to their shore. For 57 hours, Jela is the scene of an air and armored battle. Now the town falls to an American division. Tanks rumble through the shattered narrow streets. A scout car takes a shortcut. Pushing ahead of the main columns, armored units repulse Axis counterattacks upon Jela. The accuracy of Allied gunners is evident in the wreckage of this Italian armored train. German bombs accounted for much of the damage to the town itself. Looking for possible enemy snipers, troops search every building. With the civilian population, the Allied troops seem quite at home.
Italian troops, apparently quite willing to be captured, are rounded up and placed under guard. Coastal towns and cities in allied hands, British and American forces, joining with the Canadians, drive for Messina. Engineers clear minefields in the path of advancing troops. Major General Truscott, whose infantry sees Lakata and its neighboring airfields, inspects planes and hangars blasted in the attack. Gasoline and oil arrive to fuel Allied aircraft, and in a matter of hours, fighter planes are taking off in pursuit of the enemy. lined with Axis dead, enemy guns and vehicles lie shattered. As these films are issued, the battle for Sicily is underway. The combined forces of the United Nations are sweeping forward.